Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers. And in this video, we're going to be solving an equation with complex numbers. We have one plus ZI divided by one minus ZI, and that is equal to I. I is the number whose square equals negative one. It's also known as the square root of negative one. Negative one actually has two square roots, but one of them is considered the principal square root and it's called i. So how do we solve these kinds of equations? There are usually two ways to do it and I'll be presenting both methods. Let's start with the first method. By the way, if you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I made nine videos on basics of complex numbers starting with the definition of a complex number and going into more complicated or complex topics. Great, so for our first method, we're gonna call Z A plus B I. There are two reasons behind this. First reason, it's the name of this channel. The second reason is it solves the problem. So let's go ahead and replace Z with A plus B I and see what happens. One plus A plus B I multiplied by I. And at the bottom we have one minus A plus B I multiplied by I and that's equal to i. A lot of i's, right? Okay, cool. Now, let's go ahead and put the real parts together. a, but uh, first we need to distribute, so it's going to be 1 plus a i, and one thing that you should never forget, i squared is equal to negative 1. So anytime you multiply i by i, you'll get i squared. I would highly recommend that you just replace it with negative 1 and do it mentally so you can save some time. In other words, this gives us a i plus b i squared, which is minus b. Got it? Hopefully. And at the bottom, we have 1. And of course, you're going to distribute minus i. Maybe I should put the i here. It's a little easier that way. 1 minus a i. And then when you distribute this, you're going to get minus b i squared, which is plus b. Awesome. That was easy, right? And this is equal to i. Now, let's go ahead and put the real parts together. 1 minus b plus a i divided by 1 plus b minus a i. Okay, great. What do we do with these? If you are dividing complex numbers, again, that's something that I go over in lecture videos, you multiply by the conjugate. Conjugate is basically you negate the imaginary part. The real part stays the same. Okay, if, in other words, the conjugate of 1 plus uh, x plus y i is usually we use a bar to denote it is x minus y i make sense so we're going to multiply this by one plus b plus a i and one plus b plus a i and of course at the end it's equal to i let's simplify the left hand side as much as possible and then we're gonna set it equal to i at the end okay don't worry about the i for right now and in the numerator, we're supposed to distribute. And I would just do it in groups, like these two together and these two together. So it's like 1 minus i multiplied by 1 plus, sorry, 1 minus b multiplied by 1 plus b from difference of two squares, it's 1 minus b squared. Get it? If you multiply x plus y and x minus y, you get x squared minus y squared. This is one of the most important formulas in mathematics. You should definitely know this, along with the Pythagorean theorem, of course, right? Cool. That's 1 minus b squared. What about the 1 minus b multiplied by a i? That'll be 1 minus b times a i, and then a i times this is just going to be a 1 plus b i. I will put the i at the end all the time. And finally, in the numerator, a i times a i is going to be a squared i squared, which is minus a squared. Awesome. The whole thing is divided by what? Okay. If you multiply x plus y i by its conjugate, you get difference of two squares, but in the complex world, that translates into sum of two squares because i squared is negative one. Again, remember that all the time. Okay. So based on this, the denominator is going to be 1 plus b squared plus i, I mean a squared. And guess what? This is equal to i, but we're not going to worry about it right now. 
Let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit more. For example, uh, we have 1 minus b squared minus a squared. That's the real part. And then let's go ahead and add these imaginary parts. Notice that we're going to get ai minus abi and then ai plus abi. So abi is going to cancel out, leaving us with 2ai. 2ai. And at the bottom, we have the same thing. And that's a real number. And this is equal to i now. I think I can set it equal to i. Now, how do you set two complex numbers equal to each other? You separate the real and imaginary parts. So let's go ahead and separate them like this and like that. Now, what do we need? We do need to, to be i, which in other words, can be written as 0 plus 1 i. So the, oops, by the way, I forgot the i here. Let me write it down, times i. So the coefficient of i, which is the imaginary part, should be 1. So this needs to be 1. And this needs to be 0. Because there is no real part, right? And that being 0 means 1 minus b squared minus a squared equals 0. This just means a squared plus b squared is equal to 1. Awesome. Okay, great. We have a complex number whose modulus is 1. And then the second equation gives us 2a equals 1 plus b squared. Again, I forget things. Plus a squared. And then now, here we know that a squared plus b squared is equal to 1. But let's see how we can use it. 2a equals 1 plus 2b plus b squared plus a squared. Now I can go ahead and replace this with 1. That gives me 2a equals 2b plus 2 or a equals b plus 1. So I'm going to go ahead and use this along with the other equation that I have and then solve it as a system. Let's do it, okay? How do you solve it? Replace a with b plus 1. b plus 1 squared plus b squared equals 1. This is b squared plus 2b or not 2b plus 1 plus b squared equals 1. And then here b1 cancels out. 2b squared plus 2b equals 0. Factor out at 2b and you're going to get b plus 1 equals 0. From here we get two options. b is 0 or b is negative 1. But remember a is 1 more than b. If b is 0, a is 1. If b is negative 1, a is 0. What does that mean? It means that z can be a plus bi, which is 1, is a solution, or z equals a plus bi, which is negative i. Now let's go ahead and check if both of these solutions satisfy, or maybe we can do the second method, and then we can talk about checking, okay? Now, the second method is going to use a nicer approach, because the first method was kind of like super brute forcey and too long. I know some people are going to be like, what's the use, right? Just wanted to show you how that method works. But second method is cross multiply. Zi squared is negative z. So remember that turns into a plus z. I'm going to put the z's together. 1 minus i equals z minus zi. And then 1 minus i equals z times 1 minus i. Divide by 1 minus i, you get z equals 1. This is the million dollar question. Why did we get only one solution with the second method, but two solutions with the first method? That's interesting, right? Because the second solution might not satisfy. How do we know? We need to check, we don't. So let's go ahead and check that right here. So this is supposed to give me i if I replace z with negative i. If I replace z with negative i, this gives me one minus i squared, but that's one plus one. And here, if you replace this with negative i, this gives you 1 plus i squared, 1 minus 1 plus i squared, which is 0. So that's the problem. This becomes a negative 1, and this is undefined. Therefore, even though it came up as a solution somehow, negative 1 cannot be accepted, and we end up with a single solution, which is z equals 1. And one thing to keep in mind with these kinds of equations, if you knew 1 plus i over 1 minus i equals i, 
then this problem would be fairly easy. At least you would know z equals 1 is a solution. Can this equation have more than one solution? I don't think so because it's linear. Make sense? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.